What's up good people? Mark Holmes here and as always I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing and being part of the Joe Brew Sports Report without you guys as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. It is actually kind of chilly out here but we're going to get a little bit of a warm up. It's going to be in the 50s and might even hit 60 later on this week by, by Saturday. And uh, I know David Wiley's coming by this weekend. He's going to do some of the uh, pork chops, uh, uh, kebabs with the chimichurro sauce, which is actually keto. I might make it a cheat day. I might make it a cheat day and go ahead and do some regular Joe Brew Wings to just kind of end the season, you know, with the bang and get ready for the long off season. But with it getting a little bit warmer, that means spring is on the way. Here's the great thing about this year. The great thing about this year is, you know, last year this time, the season was already over. The season was already over. Usually the Super Bowl is like the first week, first couple of days of February. Here it is, February 8th. We still got football. All the way until <sighs> February 12th. Now, what do you think about this? February is a short month. It's only 28 days. And come the 16th of March, the 16th, 16th of March, that begins free agency. There is no off season, guys. We've been talking about the coaches and everything else that are coming here. We've been talking about the salary problems that the Cowboys have. We've already talked about uh, restructuring Dak Prescott's contract you think that's gonna be the only one we got cuts we got to deal with we got so much stuff it's really not an off season because once we get through free agency you've got of course the combine we've got of course the draft OTAs and everything else man we got so much stuff <laughs> oh we even got the USFL this spring oh shit don't be sad don't be sad so, what we have to figure out now, and this is all speculation by me and the talking heads and everybody else, you know, we, we want to talk about football because we love football. It's only 18 weeks of the season, regular season, to talk about. So, now is speculation time. And I'm speculating that since Prince, not and not Fresh Prince, but Prince, Coach Prince, from the Texans via the Detroit Lions, via Boise State, among other places, who is the tie-in with Kellen Moore. I think this means we're going all in with Kellen Moore's offense. I don't know how else we can quantify this, but if we have the receiver coach who was coaching with Kellen Moore and Scott Linehan, that is that offense. My problem with the offense, and it's been kind of like a light bulb has gone off. For so long we have called said that Dak Prescott's got to have everything perfect. I don't think it's Dak Prescott as much as this offense by design. I've said this a couple times over the last few days. It just feels like, because we, we have a bigger sample size than just with Dak Prescott. We saw this work to perfection back in the 90s when we had the best offensive line football. When we had a Hall of Fame running back. When we had a lights out Hall of Fame wide receiver, when we had a great tight end, and we had a great quarterback. All those things, we had the cream of the crop. Offense worked to perfection. Then we look at the latest iteration of it with Tony Romo. 2007, we actually had a great running game. Offensive lineman was good. We had 13 Pro Bowlers. 
became a bobble snap away from beating Seattle in Seattle. But then you look at some of those years that kind of got lean there. Those eight and eight, eight and eight, and eight and eight years. We didn't have the running tech. We didn't have the offensive line. Didn't have the superstar wide. No, we always had superstar wide receivers. But then 2014 was probably the pinnacle of the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. Travis Frederick, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, DeMarco Murray, 1,800 yards. Tony Romo, efficient. Des Bryant, Jason Witten. Everything was perfect. Everything worked. 2015, you lose Tony Romo. Ah! It blows up in your face. You can only win one game without Tony Romo. 2016, again, offensive line. Great wall of Dallas. Zeke Elliott, running like crazy. Dak Prescott, efficient quarterback. Des Bryant. Everything's there. Offense works. 2017. Tyron Smith goes. Zeke Elliott dealing with all the, you know, in and out of the lineup because of the NFL. Offense doesn't work. You see the, you see this, you, you notice this. You have to have everything together for this offense to work. And herein lies the fatal flaw with it. I don't know that we can ever get back to what we had back in the 90s before there was a salary cap. Jerry Jones could stockpile players. You had the best of the best. He could go out and get a Charles Haley and a Deion Sanders and things and sign him and bring him in. But now the playing field has been leveled. You can't stockpile that. And see, Jerry Jones is still doing the same thing he was doing back in the 90s by paying guys these big contracts that we never seem to get value for in the end. Very few of them. You look at this and say, what were we thinking when we signed Zeke Elliott to 2027? You, know, you realize that Zeke Elliott's contract goes as long as the Washington football team's lease at FedEx Field. You see what's happening with FedEx Field, right? You see it's literally falling apart. You see pipes are dropping sewage on people. You see that handrails are falling over on players. Fans are falling out the stands. You got to get a tetanus shot. I, I think next year on the tickets, they're going to have a spot. Are you vaccinated with the tetanus? Do you have your tetanus shot? Because it's probably some rusty nails or rebar coming out the concrete or something. Because the place is a dump. So yeah, Zeke Elliott, FedEx Field. The expiration date's the same. So we can assume, I think we can definitely assume that Kellen Moore is still gonna be calling the play calling. Kellen Moore is still his offense. Kellen Moore is still gonna do the installing. And Mike McCarthy is still gonna be saying he's the one. And he's going to be saying, he's the one right on out of here. As we say, do, do, do. goodbye, Mike McCarthy. Because if Mike McCarthy don't grab the reins of this thing, somebody else has got your destiny in their hands. And with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and carry myself to bed. I've been drinking that nasty ass shit to make me shit for my colonoscopy tomorrow morning at eight. And come to find out, I still have this much of it that I have to drink three hours before my appointment. My appointment, I gotta be there at eight. So you take three from eight, that's five. And you need to start trying to drink it an hour and 15, I'm sorry, an hour and a half ahead of time. So five minus one and a half is 3.30. So in about five hours, I got to get up and drink some more nasty ass shit so I can try and make sure I'm no longer full of shit. Right now, I'm not full of shit. Not at all. Nothing. I've been literally wiped clean. And with that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you guys and you ladies. And... Um, 
Make sure you tell somebody you love them, that you love them. And I'll see you soon.